Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our Holy Eucharist for the seventh Sunday after Easter. We thank you for joining us in this act of worship this morning. We are at the parish of St. Agnes Church, St. James. Our celebrant is the Reverend Father Ashton Gomez, Rector of St. Michael and All Angels. Father Gomez will be assisted by lay minister, Ms. Rosalind Noel, and I am Reverend Patricia St. Bernard, deacon at Christ Church Cascade. We begin with Entroid Hymn, CPWI number 196, the head that once was crowned with thorns. We begin on page 98 with the opening sentence, and then to page 101 and the pages to follow. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Alleluia, alleluia. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. The Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. 
with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to the kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Let us sit for the reading of Scripture. A reading from the Word of God written in Acts chapter 16, verses 16 to 34. One day, as we, Paul and his traveling companions, were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself! for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. This is the word of the Lord. The appointed psalm for this morning is Psalm 97, beginning on page 595 in our Book of Common Prayer. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees it and is afraid. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth, the heavens declare his righteousness, and all the peoples see his glory. 
confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad. The cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. A reading from the Word of God written in Revelation chapter 22, beginning at verse 12. Jesus said, See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with his testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let everyone who hears say, come. And let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. The word of the Lord. Sequence hymn. CPWI 529, Lord, the light of your love is shining. Hymn number 529.
The Lord be with you, also with you. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to Christ, Christ. our Savior. Jesus prayed for his disciples and then he said, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, and I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ, O Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. My sisters and brothers, this is the seventh Sunday after Easter. In the Easter season, it's the Sunday right after the ascension of our Lord. I want to start off by saying it is true. The world can be a cruel and unforgiving place. The world can be a cruel and unforgiving place. What does it mean to hold on to the Lord Jesus Christ in the face of all that has been transpiring in our country in recent days, in recent weeks? The church is always under scrutiny. The government and employees are at loggerheads. And we don't seem to be moving forward as a nation in terms of our own sense of self. Our murder rate is moving at a very speedy rate. And we ask ourselves, where is the Lord in all of this? Where is the Lord in the church? Has he gone on vacation? Has the Lord gone out of our schools? Has he been kicked out? As we saw another school shooting in Texas in the United States of America. We ask ourselves these questions because Jesus says, you know, Father, I pray not only for these, but for those who will believe in me because of them. Are people seeing a Jesus to believe in in us in today's world in today's church are they seeing Jesus Christ the Son of God or are they seeing just people pretending to be church and if we only see pretenders then we in some problems the church is made up of believers in Jesus Christ but the church also has within it wolves in sheep's clothing and it, we will be lying to ourselves to not believe that the devil remains in our midst when we come to church there we know the devil is there because we are so easily distracted from the sermon from participating in the actual service itself, our minds get, you know, confused. We start to think about what we're going to do after. I wonder if Wasa bring back water so I could wash some clothes. 
all different kinds of things. And whenever I would catch the supermarket open, if I would get the roll-up bundle of baji to make some kalaloo, our minds are set not on heavenly things, but on earthly things. And like the apostles who were looking up to the sky and had to be, to be spoken to by the two angels, what you're looking up there for? This Jesus who has left will come back again. But in between him coming and leaving, there is work to be done. And the work is to proclaim the good news. It is very difficult to accept good news in today's world with so much misinformation. Everybody is a biblical scholar. Everybody is a scientist. Everybody is a financial advisor. Everybody is everything. And when we are everything, we become nothing. Because everybody's always an expert. Google has become our God. Google is our church. Google is our doctor. Google is our financier. Google is our historian. Google is everything. So why not just bow down and say in the name of Google and Yahoo and Firefox instead of the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Because we believe in that more than we could believe in God and in each other. We don't love each other. We don't trust one another. And that's the basis of the Christianity and every institution failing in society today. And when I say institution, I don't mean institutions like the church alone. I mean institutions like marriage and family life. It is being destroyed because we don't trust anyone and we are teaching the next generation to do the same. Don't trust anybody. And then we ask ourselves, how, are we, how did we get here? We got here because we simply have turned away from God. We turned away. We let a few miscreants, people who don't believe in God, to mar the church, to mar our society. It is a few that sometimes need purging, but as they are purged, we ask that they are forgiven, that they may be restored, that they could come back to a place where we can say that they are brothers and sisters. The church is not a place to get rid of. So while we may hate the sin, we are called to love the sinner. And those things are difficult to do. Because the world tells us something else. And this is why I started off by what I said. The world can be, and it is, a hard and unforgiving place. The world knows how to judge, but the world doesn't know how to forgive. Yes? Everything is to get canceled. There's no forgiveness in the world anymore, you know. We write off people one time. Is that the way for us to live? Is this is what God is calling us to? So you see, we are standing looking up when we should be looking ahead. Not up to only see the clouds, but to look in front of us to see our brothers and sisters. It is nice to look up, you know. But it's only at eye level here could I see my brother or my sister in need? And the church, at this time, in this age, and in every age, there's always something for the church to apologize for. Because the church has people in it that sometimes misrepresent what the church stands for. The church 
falls into error from time to time. But it is God who restores it. My faith is in my Lord Jesus Christ, who left a church here for us so that we may be constantly turned to the truth, even though we must remember that the devil is in the midst of it. The church is not heaven. It is not heaven. The church is not a place where we meet righteous people. The church is a place where we meet the people of God on a pilgrim journey trying to make it into heaven. But we all wa always want to look up. We always want to have this sense of pride that we are better than other people. And it is the Lord who reminds us, this is my church, you know. Don't be full of yourself, but be full of the Holy Spirit. Come to know what it means to forgive, to trust, to obey. Because if you cannot love your neighbor as you love yourself, you cannot love God. You can't do it. So it's either we are for God or we're for the world. You got to make a choice. We live in the world, you know. But that doesn't mean that we have to be for it. We live in a place where we only think about today. Everybody only wants their share. Before anything runs out, I want my share. I want my peace. I don't care that when I get my peace, the whole thing might mash up, you know. I want my peace now. Not so? These are behaviors that are in society and these behaviors are also in the church because we don't have people that fall from heaven in the church. We have people from society in the church. And if there's corruption out there, then there's corruption in here. And we have to face that truth. If we don't face it, we can't fix it. We can't fix it. And so I want us to, to look beyond, to think about whose body is this? This is the body of Christ. It's not the body of Father Ashton. It's not the body of Bishop Claude. It's not the body of the Pope even. It is the body of Jesus the Christ, the Son of God. And the body of Christ would always be sanctified because the body of Christ has the Holy Spirit. And once we remember that, and we become humble, and we come to serve the true and living God, we will not be looking up, but we will be looking ahead. Remembering that our past cannot be changed, but we will seek forgiveness for it. That we do not seek praise for doing God's work, but praise God for allowing us to share in it. For these are the things that must change. There are far too many people who always want praise for everything. And what did Jesus tell us about that? He says, you have already received your reward. If that's what you want, you have already received it. But if your mind is on heavenly things, then we have to be like our Lord. To remember that we are here for service. We are here to serve people. Anyone who would accept the ministry of the church. We are not here to serve Anglicans alone. We are here as a church for nation building. To build up the people of God. Whether they recognize that they are people of God or not. To, to comfort those who are in pain. There's so many families that are hurting right now and we just add more pain to them. We're not trying to ease the burden. And so I say, on this seventh Sunday of Easter, at a time where we celebrated the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, are we looking ahead as a church to see people or are we looking up only to see clouds? 
The choice is yours, brothers and sisters, as it is mine. To live a renewed life or to live our old life and hope for things that are new. But the old way cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We must constantly be renewed, constantly be converted to the truth. Love God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Be faithful to him. Learn to forgive. Let us pray for real justice to happen for all those who have perpetrated crimes in any form, in particular for our against young people who have caused the nation to go down a downward spiral. But still not too late for all of us, you know. Because I, as I said, it's not the entire church that ever did that. But there were wolves in sheep's clothing. And Jesus warns about that. Predators go where the prey are. They go for the target. Yes? And in the church, this is a sad thing to say, there have been and there may continue to be predators around us because we have people in the church. You could do how much psychoanalysis you want. There are some people who know how to be good stalkers. They have been predators all their life. They will not be caught now, and they may not be caught by us, but they will be caught. And when they are, justice must prevail. Justice must prevail. And I say to you, sisters and brothers, forgive the church for its missteps along the way. As we pray that prayer that the Lord taught us to forgive others as we forgive. Forgive us as we desire to be forgiven. Some of us may not have been around when certain things happen. But we are here now. And if we are here now, we must collectively say sorry. We must collectively show by example that we are willing to change. Let the licks come. Let us get what we need to get because the Lord will straighten it out. Let us rejoice. Let us sing our praises for God lives in us. Let us be happy. Let us thank God for he has not left us or abandon us, but continue to make us whole. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith in God. As we say the words of the Apostles' Creed, page 106. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the Anglican Communion Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Most Reverend Justin Welby. We pray for the Church of South India United. We pray for the church in the province of the West Indies, for the Most Reverend Howard Gregory, Archbishop of the West Indies and Bishop of Jamaica, and for the bishops and peoples of the region. We continue to pray using intercessory prayer, Form C, found on page 108 in our Book of Common Prayer. 
with all our heart and all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy for the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy for the peace and welfare of the world, for the witness and work of the church, and for the unity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for our Bishop Claude, our diocesan bishop, and we pray for our retired bishops, Calvin, Clive, and Roll, and all ministers of God's word and sacraments, that they may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the Lord's coming. We continue to pray for all clergy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. have mercy. Today we pray for the parish of St. David, Toko and his clergy, the Reverend Father Ainsley Prince. We pray also for the Anglican Communion Diocese and bishops of the CPWI. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for the leaders of the nations and for those in authority among us, that they may serve justice and promote the freedom and dignity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have, have mercy. mercy. We continue to pray for our president, Paula May Weeks, Her Excellency. We continue to pray for our Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Keith Rowley, the Chief Justice and all members of Cabinet and Parliament, all members of the Tobago House of Assembly, the Leader of the Opposition, and Director of Public Prosecution. We pray also for the members of the Judiciary, Protective Services, the State Prisons, and the Health Sector. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We continue to pray for our Synod, which will be held during the period the 8th to the 11th of June. We also pray for the Jubilee celebration as a diocese celebrating 150 years. And we continue to pray for the rebuilding efforts of the cathedral. Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, and for all who labor in the cause of human liberation and fulfillment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, the suffering, the sorrowful, and the dying, and for all who remember and care for them, we continue to pray for the families who are grieving for the loss of their loved ones due to crime and due to the other medical issues and the COVID-19 virus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. We continue to pray for deliverance from the ravages of hurricane, earthquake, drought, or flood, and for a just and proper use of God's creation. We remember the people of Ukraine and other countries experiencing disaster this time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. We pray for ourselves and all who confess the name of Christ, that we may show forth the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. O Lord, our God, Accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion on us and all who turn to you for help, for you are gracious, O Lord of love. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The act of penitence. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Using form A, let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. 
for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Form C of the greeting of peace. The kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Three Hem CPWI 383. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven. Hem 383. Through your goodness, Lord, we have this bread and wine to offer, the fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. They will become our spiritual food. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own do we give you. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. Through your dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, after his glorious resurrection, he openly appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, there we might also be and reign with him in glory. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Form E on page 142. Sovereign Lord and Father, to you be glory and praise forever. 
In your boundless wisdom, you brought creation into being. In your great love, you fashioned us in your image. In your tender compassion, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, our savior, to share our human nature. In the power of the Holy Spirit, he overcame the power of sin and death and brought your people to new birth as first fruits of your new creation. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take this and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to the command of your dearly beloved Son, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming. And we offer you, Father, a sacrifice of thanks and praise. Send your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Redeemer. As we partake of this holy food of new and unending life, may your Holy Spirit establish us as a royal priesthood with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Agnes, St. David, and all your sons and daughters who share in your eternal inheritance through Jesus Christ our Lord. With him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, Blessing and, and honor, honor and glory and, glory and, power, and power be yours forever, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The first form for the breaking of the bread. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Our souls will feast and be satisfied, and we will sing glad songs of praise to him. My brothers and sisters at home, we ask you to make your spiritual communion. As you approach the Lord in prayer, so he comes to you, so he blesses you, so he sanctifies you. We pray that we will not be caught always looking upward, but that we will look and see each other and see Christ in each other. Communion hymn, CPWI 840. Be still for the presence of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray the second post-communion prayer in the middle of page 148. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ, our King, make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. We wish to take a moment to thank our organists and choristers from St. Agnes Church who um, gave us live music this morning. So thank you very much. Thank you to Father Gomez for being the celebrant and being assisted by lay minister, Ms. Rosalind Noel. We end our service this morning with the final hymn, CPWI number 363, Angel Voices Ever Singing. Angel Voices Ever Singing. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Have a blessed day, everyone.